Well, made some progress. Uh, keep in mind, I've just got these high voltage caps just tacked in. I'll fasten them more permanently once I get the set going, but this high voltage cap right here, another one of those black ceramics, it was bad. So now I've got about 3,000 volts. So still not quite enough, but making a little progress. I'll keep plugging away and see if I can get this picture tube to light up, do something. And while changing this cap right here it did improve the voltages on this tube. It's still pretty weak. Should be close to 300 volts there. We'll have to get that high voltage up to five or 6,000 volts or I won't see any kind of a raster on the screen, so. Well, as I continued to change more of the paper caps, I've got somewhat of an image. Still all out of proportion and out of sync and low brightness, but that's some progress anyway. High voltage, it's up around 5,000 volts, so should be good enough to produce a decent picture. So I'm going to take a lunch break and I'll get back on this later on today. But good, good place to stop, a little bit of progress. While this little Emerson set is similar to the Motorola electrostatic set, these paper caps are a bear to get to. I just changed one. See, it was way down in there. And got another one back here. It's behind this coil. You just barely see it down in there. That one. And then there's two more. One here and one here. A little easier to get to, but not, it's going to be a challenge. And then this part of the board, uh, there's one, one here, one hidden right there. And there's a couple in here, one there and one back there. And even one right here, right here. So this is going to be quite a challenge to change those paper caps. Well, we're getting there, making some more improvements. Still have probably, still have probably five or six more paper caps to change. As I've mentioned in a lot of my other videos, I do change one cap at a time. So if you make a mistake, you got time to go back and find your mistake before you change several caps and then you're then you really got a problem then. But seems every time I put a new one in, it gets a little better. So I'm gonna continue on and I'll show you some progress later. Okay, finishing up the last couple of paper caps. And these are up in the audio circuit. Uh, it was working fine, but don't want to leave them old ones in there. Here's the first one I replaced right here. These are a pain to get to, but I was able to just remove the audio transformer, get it out of the way, and then push that cable up. And you can see pretty well then. So I've got one more to do, this one right here. And that'll finish up the paper caps. And here's a good example of changing all of those paper caps. Uh, this was the last one I put in in the sound circuit. 
while I bet this cap will check okay on the cap checker. Look at the end of it there. So that's why you always want to replace all of those paper caps. We're about to get this little set finished. And there's a bone yard of all the parts I put in. Most all of those parts are paper caps, ceramic caps, and we're in a high voltage circuit. And then of course there's a selenium rectifier. One electrolytic, that's a 100 mic, 25 volt. And I just replaced it with a smaller type. Well, that completes all the recap of the paper caps. The only thing I haven't addressed are the filter caps. Uh, this is a th two section. This is a three section. All right, time to restuff these electrolytic ca capacitors. And I've taken that one out. And I put tags on the three lines that go to the cap here here and there and here's the cap after I've removed the paper sleeve there it is and then the way I do these I just cut the cut the bottom off like that just cut it off of course clean all the connections up and I'll bore a hole by each terminal and feed the, the new capacitor lead through that hole and then attach it to the terminals. All right, have all three caps mounted. I use just one ground wire coming to a lug on the outside. And all three are attached together internally there. Uh, Put a little tape around them just, just to hold them in position. Well, got the cap mounted back in. Got the new caps put in and everything hooked up. And this is a cover that goes on and it just slides on like that. May put a dab of silicone just to hold the cover tight. And there was a piece of tape went across the top to hold the antenna wire one down that one there to go it will be a lot easier to get to that's the advantage to it these are very brittle and hard to get out because these rivets you have to drill them out if you're not careful there's one on each side of that insulator. If you're not careful, you'll break that insulator. Makes it a little tougher to do. But we'll get that other one done. And that'll have the electrolytics all taken care of too. So I'm gonna take a lunch break and probably this afternoon back on that other cap. That was that was quite a job changing that one. One other thing I'm going to do is change this antenna terminal. See this one's screws are rusty. It's kind of tarnished and just happen to have a new one. That I can replace it with. So be doing that too. These spacers here that hold the term antenna terminal out away from the chassis made out of wood. Manufacturers used a lot of wood back in those days. Thought I was about ready to do some cabinet work. And this thing 
did a little hiccup. Had to go back and do a little more work on it. I had noticed, even though I had a decent picture, the high voltage really didn't really didn't read what I thought it should. It was a little bit low, causing the picture to be washed out and just just didn't seem quite right. So even though I have changed all the paper caps that I had found, restuffed the electrolytics, all of that was finished. I found one more paper cap. This dude right here. C81, it's a point zero 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 five and it connects from the high voltage rectifier tube to ground. Of course it's bad too. Let me show it to you. And I can't check this. It's such a low value there's no way I can with my cap checker it'll test it but you can see there it's been hot spewed out definitely bad so I didn't have a point zero 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 five and that is a six kV cap so six thousand volt so what I did I just took two point double ones put them in series and it works but I do have a, a, new, a new cap ordered so I'll be replacing that before I finish up the set and it did make quite a difference in picture quality I turned on here I also have good 7JP4 plugged into the set so I'm going to hook up the original tube in the set and we'll see if the difference in picture. When I pull the sockets off of these older tubes, I use a screwdriver and just prise a little bit all the way around. You get an original tube that the base happens to be loose on but still works. This is a safe way of getting the socket off. You're not only prizing out, but you're prizing in on the original, on the base of the tube, so a lot safer. Well, the original tube's not as bright. It'd be okay. I mean, I'm not going to be watching the set every day anyway, so that's not a big deal. And also, I have the high voltage cage off, so that's not helping matters either. See that rectifier tube glowing there. So we got a few more little things to do on the chassis. Uh, got to put the lid on this electrolytic that I cap restuffed. Uh, have that one on. So got to put that on. Got to clean the, all the controls, clean the tuner contacts. But we're just about ready to start on the on the cabinet. See what we can do with it to clean it up a little. And there's a point, point zero 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 five cap. Got a new one put in there. So, so now I'll put the high voltage cage back on. And one last thing that I did do to the chassis. Put a fuse in the AC line. Just a three amp fuse. We're finished with the chassis. That's all for part two. Now that we have the chassis repaired, we'll be turning our attention to the cabinet in part three, which is the final part of our series on the Emerson restoration. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.